but no more uh, tomorrow. They'll probably end up playing um, some minutes uh, Thursday. But and uh, what can you uh, – I don't think we've asked – Oh, sorry. Um, I don't think we've asked about sort of the final roster spot or spots. Uh, you've got a few guys kind of going for that. What, what do we need to know about that competition? Well, um, nothing has been decided. We have guys fighting for those spots, and uh, camp has been very competitive on starting spots, on, on rotation spots, and then team spot. Uh, we're, we, haven't, we haven't decided. Uh, it's tough. It's always, uh, you always want it to be competitive. You want to give everybody a fair crack at it. Uh, and it make to my and it makes it makes my job difficult at the end. It's always the tough time of the year for head coaches throughout the league is to make those decisions, um, along with uh, Tommy. But it hasn't been decided yet. Fred. Hey Scott, just following up on on Chase's question. Um, how about Davis for Thursday? Any idea on that yet? Um. More than likely not. I hate to commit so soon. He's went through uh, some practices the other day. He went through some of the practices, uh, practice today. Um, every day, we're going to plan plan to add a little bit more. We're just going to see how it, how it plays out. Uh, we don't have to make a commitment now. We still have some time. Um, but he did a little bit today, but not not an entire entire practice. And and then. Also, um, with with preseason being only three games now, and two for some, do you do you ever talk to opposing coaches in advance in a way that you never would for like a game that actually mattered to find something mutually beneficial to make sure that you have like starters playing against starters or anything along those lines? I've done it in the past when we've had more games. Um, I would give them a heads up. Hey, we're going to work on our zone. Uh, but we've done it in the past. This, not 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 this time. And there's only so many games, and and but no, sometimes uh, in the past I, we've done it. Do Do you find that that's that's helpful? If a coach reaches out to you and and does a similar thing, says, "Hey, we want to work on our zone." Do you do you say like, "Okay, well." that gives us a heads up, we can work on our zone offense. Like, do you find there's, there's anything that, that I mean, we react when it's made of you? It depends which coach is reaching out to me first. <laughs> um, some, I probably wouldn't take the call. Um, but I think, um, I think it's, we all have, you know, a lot of respect for each other and professional courtesy. I mean, Early in the preseason, if you have to work on some things, you kind of try to give them a heads up. But this this year is so different. I don't even think any coaches will do that. Uh, we didn't play zone uh, last game. We probably uh, Coach Casey. We're gonna play some zone Thursday night. So there you go, Fred. Communicating through the media. Thanks, Scott. Chris Miller. What's up, Scotty? How are you? Good, Chris. How you doing? I'm good. Hey, after going back and looking at the game, the one thing that kind of stood out to me watching Denny is he was really bothered when people scored on him. Is that something that you saw kind of in camp throughout the week that his give a you know what on that end of the floor matters? Yeah, his care his care level or give a blank level has all has been pretty high. And and in, in this league, you need that. You need that. You need you don't want guys that you know what. Good shot, tough shot, pat them on the butt. Uh, you want guys to be upset that they get scored on. If we're going to be a better defensive team, we have to have that mentality individually and collectively as a group. We got to make sure that um, we do our best to prevent. I thought defensively we were pretty good, take away that first quarter and then transition. It's, it's, and that's on me. There's so many things to work on. Um, we kind of did not, um, not that we didn't pay attention to it. We talked about it, we did it a few times, but today, we spent a lot of time on transition defense. And so we know how critical that is, but there's, you know, there are so many things to put in 
um, that, that's definitely something that we've worked on the, the last uh, today in practice. Thanks, Scotty. Thank you. Ava. Hey, Scott. Um, I got a question uh, about Todd for you. Um, with what he's going to become for you guys and what he will be um, this coming year with Russ and everything. I remember when you would say you're paying him to take 23s uh, a big game, you know, you, you made a bet that he couldn't. How much in Brad kind of becoming the guy for you guys was about him becoming comfortable with being more assertive and, and maybe a little bit more selfish? I don't know if that's the right word, but kind of that evolution of his game. Um, Brad, yeah, I, I think, I don't know, I, don't, I, I wouldn't use the word selfish. I would use the word playing with more force. And by doing that, it helps our group. And I think he's put the time in all every off season since I've been here. And I've challenged him in training camp and during the seasons to add, add pieces to the game that, you know, he didn't have the, the year before. Um, I thought the last two years playing, you know, he, he's playing without, without John, he had to do a lot for us. I mean, he had to do a lot for us. And, and not only that, he had to, he had to lead. And with leading a bunch of young players last season or players that did not have a lot of experience, that's, uh, that's pretty taxing mentally. Uh, and then being able to do the load on the offensive end. So um, we, we add, definitely added some uh, important pieces and some help uh, with Russell and Brooke and you know, signing DB back and the other guys that we picked up and all the experience that we've got. But uh, playing with force, he's going to have to. I mean, Russell is obviously a dynamic uh, all NBA player, um, but we need um, Brad to continue to uh, will his abilities onto every game, and that's going to help us. By having Brad do that, it creates so many easy opportunities for our bigs and our shooters. Um, I think he's the way he's done the last two years, and I think uh, adding adding Russell to the mix is only going to get better at it. And then just from a practical standpoint, did you guys have everybody who was available to practice today, practice today? I don't know where like W's timeline is on and everything, but that's the injury list. Yeah, um, DB is, just, we're just slowly working him in. Um, I'm sure his body is uh, feeling the aches and pains of, of just getting back, um, but he's, he's looking good. He's, good thing about it, he can still shoot. So uh, he doesn't miss a lot of those shots. Um, Rui did not practice today. His eyes, something was going on with his eyes and we'll be taking a look at that. Uh, don't seem to be serious. He was just, he stayed out and just, and just um, observed practice and we didn't want to do any physical contact with him. Uh, but I'm sure he should be fine tomorrow. Was Ish able to practice? Was he back? Who? Ish? Ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ish. Ish. Was, um, yeah, he was able to practice, went through everything, was great. Uh, he'll probably tell you he, he blocked uh, one of Russell's jump shots. So that was – those two guys have a history together. So that was a big competitive thing during the practice today. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Quentin. How you doing, Coach? Good, Quentin. How you doing? I'm doing well. Has Russell's uh, no-dunk um, order been lifted – and if so, uh, what, what went into that decision for you to uh, tell him no dunking in practice or at least camp? No, nah, I mean, Russell, he's obviously as explosive and dynamic, and that's a big part of his game. And I tell him you got, you know, whatever he has left, um, five, six, seven more years of playing, and he only has, you know, 2,349 dunks left. Let's save them for the game. Um, you just want to save, you know, it takes a lot. He, he won't want to admit it, but it takes a lot to get up there. I mean, I, I, I do these things throughout the years. I you know I had him earlier in the year when he couldn't throw a lob. We had the no lob rule because he couldn't throw a lob to save his life. And I said, well, you had to practice uh, individually before you could do it in the practice floor. And we would have weeks with no lobs, the entire team. Uh, the no dunk was just for him. You know, he, he's, he takes practice as it's uh, game seven. That's what, that, that is actually what makes him special. Uh, been a lot, a, lot, a lot of players and 
he 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 locks in to practice like not a lot of players do, and and that's almost like a protect him from his own uh, wiring, his own mindset, because he would try to dunk on everybody, and and I trying to you know save his legs and save his his jumps uh, for the game, but he that's how he practices, and I know, so I try to do my job is try to control. Uh, his intensity level. He doesn't need to do it in the dunks. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. It is pretty awkward when he's up there about 15 feet in the air and he's laying it up where you know that was going to be a, a crazy dunk over somebody. Uh, but yeah, but it's, it's, been, it's been good. All right, we got time for a couple more, Neil. And the only way to make him do it, I tell him if he dunks, the rest of the team has to run. I'm sure one day during the season, he's going to want guys running just to mess with them a little bit. Hey, Coach. Um, Russell said something interesting last week that, you know, his job is to, you know, the energy is there right now, but his job is to make sure it's there consistently like that throughout the season. I'm curious in your experience of all the seasons you've coached, is it typical and almost always the case that you get the good energy right now and it's, towards the end of the season where you really struggle to maybe maintain that? Yeah. I mean, I, I've told the players a couple of days, a couple of days ago, there's 29 teams feeling good about themselves uh, along with us. They've had a great first day. They had a good first you know, week. Um, Cause if you, if you're not, it's going you're in for a long, miserable season. Uh, so everybody feels good right now, but just being, being around uh, Russell for many, many years, this is not changing. These guys, may, they think that this is not going to be normal. Though this is normal. He's going to bring that juice every day. He's going to talk to everybody every day. He's going to want to win drills every day. Uh, my job is to control that and, you know, take him out of some drills. And I do the same thing with Brad. Now I have two guys that want to win. And, and I think it's going to help. It brings the group up. And when you have your, your, the best teams I've been on as a player, the best teams I've read about as a you know, fan of the game or the best teams I've coached are the teams that are led by their best players and holding themselves accountable and then locking in. Because if any time you say uh, something to players and you're not doing it yourself, that, that carries nothing. Uh, the, the players just roll their eyes and, and they, don't, they don't pay any mind to you. But I think when we have two leaders like we have, I think it's going to pay off for our young players. They're they're impressionable, and they're and they get to see they get to see two high level professionals do it every day. Fred, you have another one? Yes, I did. I have one more. Um, Scott, reg regarding Davis, when whenever he is ready to go, um, do do you see any different ways to use him now when you have two guys? I mean, last year you really had one guy who was your major facilitator, and now you've got two who do it at an all-star level. Do you see other ways that you're going to be able to use him this year with just having two guys as weapons on the floor with him? Yeah, I mean, it, just think about the dilemmas teams will have. I mean, it's going to be a pretty good end of um, game lineup. You got you got Russell, you got Brad, and you got DB. Um, so you're going to have to pay attention to if Russell has the ball, depending on who other, who other guys we have, and we can throw more shooters out there that if you, you can't, you can't slip up on Brad. Otherwise that's a quick three. Russell has an ability to find guys with either hand. Uh, he's one of the best left-handed passers in the league. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what angle because he can take it from the dribble and throw it. And same thing with DB. You, you mess up a split second, it's too late. Uh, and so this, and also Brad, Russell, and, and then Russell, if he's off the ball, uh, he knows how to get to the rim uh, on these quick passes that demand attention. Uh, and so he, it's tough to catch up to his speed. But, and also I think the, another thing that we were gonna see throughout the year is that when you have two really good players that demand a lot of attention, they see things that, that the coaches don't have to diagram because they play with their instincts and they know how to, they know how to read the game and they can manipulate the defense um, more so than a set play.
because when you have a set play, a lot of the teams know what you're calling. They, they, they kind of prepare for that. But when you, when you play what I call summertime, it's harder to defend because now you've got good playmakers that can make split-second decisions. So I, I, see, I see it uh, helping us big time when you have those two guys on the floor with DB. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Is that it? Chase, did you have one more? Chase, come on, Chase. Yeah, one more. Last sorry. one. Um, be good. Tommy, uh, the other week said something really interesting about Davis Bertans that he might be one of the most underrated transition defenders in the NBA. Um, what does he do on the fast break defensively that um, stands out to you guys when you watch the film? I, I think his first three steps, and he's not he's not paying attention. He's not an offensive rebounder. He's always going to, and, and that's and that's a, a good thing. When we get an offensive rebounder, he has the ability. He sees the floor when the ball goes up in the air. So he's always reading where he can be. If we do get an offensive rebound, it could be a kick out three. Those are deadly. Those are, if you really want to uh, piss off a coach, you make a few of those in a game and you just get so frustrated because you make them miss, they get an offensive rebound and then you hit a three. So he does a pretty good job of floating back uh, in case he can get he can get there. So he's almost, you know, he's one third of the way back and, his, and, and he has an awareness. Um, He's a, he's a smart basketball player. And, and the good thing about I love about DB, he's not just a shooter. He's an all-around player. And you're going to even see more of that um, this year. And, and uh, I, I love that about him. And when we signed him and having him back, we knew how important he, he um, is for our team. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely more than a shooter. His transition defense is good, but he knows how to play the game. Um, Scott, uh, Coach Brooks has told us that, you know, they've been working you back sort of slowly um, since you joined the team a little bit late. What's that process been like for you? Well, every day slowly and slowly doing some more stuff with the team. Whenever there's something that the medical staff think is a little too much, then I just go and visually work on the other court, get some shots up, run a little bit more. And, yeah, the whole idea is just slowly get me back in the, in the 5 on 5 and I wanted to ask you about something uh, Tommy Shepard uh, said the other week about you, that you're an underrated transition defender. How would you kind of evaluate uh, that part of the game for you and, and, and what's your approach? Well, that probably is just coming after. Uh, if I'm on the three-point line, then it makes sense if I'm the first one back on transition. So, so that's kind of, I guess, that's how it works out in my favor. Chris Miller? Laser, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How would you evaluate Russell Westbrook's trash talk compared to yours? No, it's up there. It's up there. You know, I've I've joined late, so I have to kind of catch up. But uh, I've been I've been holding it in for like seven months, so I think at, at one point it's all gonna just come pouring out. So it's gonna be a lot of fun here. And to follow up, obviously. Um, Anytime somebody signs a big deal in the league, you'll always notice a teammate or a coach or someone will come up and ask for a loan. Has that happened to you yet? No, the only thing was uh, Coach Brooks just asked me for a Starbucks gift card this morning. So I may get that for him. <laughs> Thanks. Fred? Hey, Dallas, what's going on, man? Um, I, I'm wondering, you're really not going to get very much time. You maybe, it sounds like maybe only one game at most to kind of work with, especially the new guys before you start playing games that matter, uh, especially now that you have a, a new point guard who's going to be such a central point of your offense. Are you doing anything to make up for the lost time to try to uh, make the kind of easing in process a little bit easier? Are you watch more film, having different kinds of conversations, that kind of stuff? Oh. Uh. I don't think there's anything special because uh, the type of player that I am, I just got to make sure that I'm in the right spot and make my shots. And even more so this year with, uh, with Russ being on the team, uh, you know, it's going to be more opportunities for me to get those easy looks instead of working for them so much. And, you know, I'm just going to be able to make those shots. And, uh, and I guess like the last, well, seven months I've been working on shooting as always. So... <laughs> That, that, that should be fine. Does, I mean, we saw you move off the ball so actively last year, and obviously you're comfortable shooting from wherever. 
But last year, you guys kind of worked off of one main major playmaker with Brad. Now that you have two out there, does it change at all how you operate? Does it change where you want to be on the floor? Or are you still kind of making reads and doing your thing? Well, I'm, uh, I think I've always been able to read read the offense and I know where I should be in every position. And uh, and I think it's just going to be easier for everybody since, you know, there's a lot of defensive attention towards Brad and now having Russ too. And, uh, you know, we got, I think, more shooters. Uh, every, everybody's improved during the summer. You can see that uh, Rui's making threes. Uh, uh, Denny is a pretty good shooter. So... I think in that in that case, it's going to be a lot easier for uh, for Brad and Russ to attack the rim, and you know the defense has to pay more attention to them than everybody else is going to be open around on the perim- perimeter. So you know I think the team's built offensively pretty great. It's going to be more what we're going to do on the defensive end, uh, how we're going to talk on defense, how we're going to play, how hard we're going to play on defense, and uh, that's going to be the the main differential of whether we're going to win games or lose games. Thanks, Ben. Ava. Hey, Davis. Um, both Brad and Russ have talked a little bit about finding the right balance between giving their bodies adequate rest, especially in the shortened preseason, and being able to kind of get into a game rhythm. With where you're at on your timeline, is kind of pushing for to get in games and, and making sure the chemistry is there with all the new pieces and, and just um, you have the time to get in rhythm. Is that something that's been on your mind where you're really eager to get in games just to kind of get the feel back? Well, I've been eager for uh, for a few months now to get back on the court and play. Since uh, you know the with this whole COVID situation, we didn't really have a chance to go like live five on five drills or or anything during the summer back home, and uh, it was mostly individual workouts. And uh, coming back here, you know the chemistry is there from get go. You know it's <laughs> it's been great since I've been back. Uh, I think guys have a really good relationship already, and uh, and it's going to take. Uh, the work on the court until like those little things have going to be like fixed, you know, especially on the defensive end. Offensively, it's going to, it's going to be easy. I think cause uh, everybody's a, a great player on offense. And, uh, and as for me, I think the type of player that I am, it's, it's not hard for me to jump in in a team in the middle of the season if I have to and do what I do. Cause I just got to be in the right spot and shoot. And we've heard so much already about what, what um, Russ, Russ brings as a leader. How have you seen him and Brad work off of each other in camp so far in terms of the being vocal aspect and, and that a little bit more into that um, leadership aspect of it? Uh, Russ has been very vocal, like these few practices that I've been, been here. And uh, he's always teaching guys, especially the young guys. And, uh, and as for Brad, I can feel that there's already a great chemistry because uh, Russ is always looking for him. He knows that uh, Brad's the, the one that's going to score for us the most and that he has to find him, set everybody up. And, uh, you know, he's going to be the floor general and uh, he's going to have to see when he has to involve other guys more in offense when uh, maybe Brad needs a little break. But but overall, I think the chemistry has been great uh, looking at that we've been here together for just a few days. Thanks, David. Quentin. How you doing, DB? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, my first question for you is not being able to play, at least so far, especially in that last preseason game, what was your assessment of what you saw from that team um, out there that played against Brooklyn? And also, I guess, the the leap that you've seen from guys like Rui Hachimura and also your first impressions on Denny. So it's like a stack question, but just in general, like your overall viewpoint of the first preseason game. Uh, in general, I think uh, you could see that it's been a while since everybody been together on the court and especially not having uh, Brad and Russ in this game. You could feel that in the, in the first half, every guy thought that was like, well, I, I can be the guy that can score. Mm-hmm. And uh, we actually had a talk about it today that, you know, there's, that, that's what Russ mentioned at the end of the practice. Like, you, you have to know your role. You know, of course, it was hard in the first game that you don't have the, the two leaders on the team playing. Then, of course, somebody's trying to do something more than they usually wouldn't. And uh, in that situation, the first half was was a little bit of a mess. I think that every guy that caught the ball tried to score. And uh, in the second half, you could see that everybody understood. It's like it's, sometimes when you drive to the basket, it's not for you to score, but to find somebody else open. So. 
So it's going to, it's going to take some time for everybody to adjust and understand their role. But once that happens, I think uh, we can be a really great team. And also you did mention uh, prior to John's trade that you had been watching some John Wall footage, just trying to mentally prepare yourself to play alongside him. Have you taken that same kind of outlook in terms of now playing with Russell Westbrook or is it more been of just, you know, I'm in the building. I get to see him every day. That's all I need to prepare to play with him. Uh, I think there's there's some difference, but at the same time, uh, both Russ and John are uh, very explosive, fast players. Uh, they can get to the rim easy and uh, and break down defenses. So I think uh, in some way, w watching those John John's clips last year, uh, like during the summer, the it, it also helped prepare for uh, for playing with Russ. Appreciate you, brother. All right, last question, Neil here. Hey, Davis. Obviously, you have a pretty unique perspective. You've played in the Euro League for a few years. You've played in the NBA for a few years now. If there was anything big difference that you could differentiate between the styles of play and then what advice you might give to somebody like Denny, who's played a few years in Euro League, but obviously now making the transition to the NBA? Well, I think the, the biggest difference, of course, the athleticism and uh, the speed of the game. But uh, as for coming from, uh, from Europe here, uh, I had people give me advice about just, you know, doing the things that you do well on the court, especially in your first years. Don't try to do too much because that's going to put you in trouble. And, you know, if you can shoot it well, just shoot the ball when you're open. If you can drive well, drive. If you can pass, pass. But uh, don't try to do too much. Don't, don't try to be the hero immediately. And, uh, and that's going to put you in, in trouble with your teammates, coaches, and, and can take some minutes away from you.